It's time to review another one of my favorite adventure game series. This time, it's Broken Sword. The game series was made by the British developer Revolution Software, with the first two games being made in the late 90s, a third game made in 2003, and a fourth in 2006. A new game in the series is underway, so I felt a review of the series would be most appropriate. But this video will be in two parts. In part one, I'll take a look at the first three games in the series, and in the second, I'll review the fourth and latest installment. So, let's get on with the reviews. The first game in the series is The Shadow of the Templars, which was released in 1996, though in the States, puzzlingly, it was released under the title Circle of Blood. In the game, you're George Stobart, an American lawyer on vacation in Paris. You're caught in a cafe explosion where the perpetrator was a man dressed as a clown who steals the briefcase of an old man called Plantard who dies in the explosion. By following the killer's trail, discovering where he got his costume, and with the help of a French photojournalist, Nicole Collard, you discover that he is a costumed serial killer and that the briefcase contained a medieval manuscript related to the Knights Templar, an order of knights persecuted as heretics in the 1300s. George starts off on a search for what he thinks is the Templar's hidden treasure and discovers that Khan, the costumed killer, is actually a member of the Middle Eastern Hashiyashi, the cult of the assassins. Not only that, Khan is trying to prevent a secret organization that considers themselves the followers of the Templars from finding the Sword of Baphomet, which is what the manuscript points to. As the game progresses, George travels to Ireland, Syria, and Spain to look for clues while stopping in Paris to keep Nico in the loop. The game utilizes a cartoony art style with hand-animated characters and scanned backgrounds. It's very impressive, almost on par with The Curse of Monkey Island. There's plenty of fully animated cutscenes, but the animation work is also very impressive in-game as well. This is just an overall well-crafted game, although there are a few graphic bugs here and there. The voice cast is pretty good, although you will notice that Revolution tends to recycle voices a lot of the time. A great detective assumes nothing. Thing. Is there such a thing as a cold which isn't nasty? Many beneficent greetings, my most fortunate possible friend. There is no household, only the Countess and myself. A few of them also have annoyingly high pitches and sound otherwise kind of unappealing. In this first game, Nico sounds particularly bad at times, though I do enjoy that lovely French accent of hers. My favorite overall, though, has to be George, played by Rolf Saxon. What sets Broken Sword apart from other adventure games is his delightful, smart-alecky past tense narration. It differs from other adventure games where the internal monologue is in the present tense and gives the game a nice narrative feel. Oh my god. Klausner? Large as life and twice as dead. I'd hardly had time to accept the fact when I heard the door mechanism start up again. Oh man, no! As for difficulty, the Broken Sword games have always been on the easy side. A large part of this is that you usually only have a small number of locations where you can travel, but also because the gameplay is basically simplified to the two mouse buttons. Even so, puzzles are usually very logical, and the game also utilizes puzzles where you have to talk to characters about certain topics or items in order to advance the plot. Now, there are a few occasions in this game where you can die, so saving the game fairly often is recommended. What makes this game worth playing after all these years, though, is the excellent story. It starts off a little slow, but eventually it will get you hooked and excited about finding the next piece of the puzzle that brings you closer to the broken sword. Now, there is also a director's cut of the game available. Considering that the old game has some difficulties running on newer computers and that you definitely need ScumVM for it to work, getting the director's cut might be tempting, but I would still prefer the original over it. For one, the director's cut actually removes a lot of the classic hotspots and George's lines from the game, which is a bummer, and on top of which cutscenes have been censored in many parts of the game to remove either blood or to just tone down the violence. Also, you can't die, but you do get to play as Nico, and there are actually some new puzzles in the game, which is sort of cool. Either way, The Shadow of the Templars is definitely worth playing, and one of my all-time favorite adventure games. Next up, we have Broken Sword 2 The Smoking Mirror. It's set sometime after the first game. George has been away from Paris to tend to his dying father, and returns to see Nico again. She's working on a story relating to an Aztec artifact, 
and they go see an archaeologist about it. However, the person they think is the butler knocks George out, captures Nico, and leaves George trapped in a burning house. After escaping and rescuing Nico, George discovers that the bad guys are trying to free the Aztec god of death, Tezcatlipoca, from a mirror inside a temple. The only thing that can stop them are three spirit stones like the one Nico found, so the game turns into a quest to find the other remaining stones. Since Smoking Mirror was released only a year after The Shadow of the Templars, it shouldn't come as any surprise that it is in many ways a rushed sequel. Though it still has that lush cartoony look and some excellent locations like Paris, the Caribbean, London, and the fictional South American country of Cuaramonte, the graphic look isn't nearly as finished as the first game. There are even character models that clearly aren't hand-drawn, and to top it off, I think the cutscenes are also a lot less clean and tend to have some animation errors in them. Another area where you can tell this game is rushed is just how easy it is. The game's puzzles are a lot more straightforward than the game's predecessor, which is why this game still holds the record for the shortest time I've spent beating an adventure game. A whole two days. You can die at two locations in this game, but both situations are easily avoidable. But there is one area where this game has actually improved over the last installment, and that's the audio department. The voice cast is much better, and even when they recycle voices, I find it less jarring than in the last game. Sure, Labano has an incredibly deep voice where it was much more high-pitched in the first game, but it doesn't bother me that much. Does the Templar seal appear on this manuscript? I'd love to see that for myself. Nicole told me to guard it with my life. Well, it's worth more than that, surely. Oh, very funny. The only bad thing is that throughout the whole Broken Sword series, the only recurring character who's retained his voice seems to be George. Nico gets her voice redone for every single game, but I don't mind with Broken Sword 2, since it's probably my favorite voice actress for Nico. In addition, you also get to play as Nico, which is also a nice feature as it, as it brings a different perspective to the game's events. The music is also a big improvement. The first game's soundtrack is really good too, but the second game just sounds much more polished, and the music cues are brilliant. At the start of the game, you pick up a statue of Tezcatlipoca, which you can show to a number of characters. Just listen to the music when you do. Do you recognize this statue? Tezcatlipoca? The Night Wind? Take it away, senor. That stone is cursed. Also, I really love the reggae-style ending theme. It started a tradition of having a standalone song during the credits, and I really like it. So, to sum up, Broken Sword 2 is a horribly rushed sequel, and also very easy. The plot, although a nice departure from its predecessor, is undoubtedly weaker. However, it's still a really fun game, thanks to the excellent dialogue and goofy characters. It comes off slightly more comical than its predecessor, but it's still a worthwhile and enjoyable game. Well, after a six-year-long gap during which Revolution released the somewhat well-received but commercially disappointing In Cold Blood, the third game in the Broken Sword series was finally released, The Sleeping Dragon. Things have changed for George Stobart. He and Nico have broken up, apparently. At the beginning, George is going to see an inventor named Chumley in Congo when his plane crashes. He witnesses Chumley get murdered. Meanwhile, in Paris, Nico is about to interview a geek relating to strange weather patterns, but he is killed by someone posing as Nico earlier on. George's hunt for clues to Chumley's death leads him to Glastonbury, where he meets Bruno, one of the Neo Templars, and saves his life. Bruno has apparently reformed since the events of the first game, especially since a power-hungry man named Senior Cesaro is now leading the Neo Templars, renaming it the Cold of the Dragon. He reveals that they intend to use the mystic energies of the ley lines to gain immortality and power. George and Bruno's hunt to find a location where the power is concentrated, like the temple at the end of the first game, leads them back to Paris, where George and Nico once again join forces to fight the bad guys. So, this game is definitely more of a direct sequel to the first game, with a lot of returning characters. However, it also has a great original cast. As well, I believe it's because of this good combination of old and new, why this game is my second favorite installment of the whole series. The plot may be a little more straightforward, but it still has a lot of content and a lot of interesting parts to it. This is the first full 3D game in the series, and in that, it's really good. The game isn't just blindly translating itself into a 3D environment, 
but instead takes full advantage of the 3D look with excellent and very well animated cutscenes and showing off the 3D environments in various ways. My favorite part is when you get to climb all around to Sorrow's castle later in the game. However, this game's voice acting is a bit of a mixed bag. The main characters, George, Nico, Lobino, and Bruno, all sound good, but there's a lot of characters with breathy or otherwise really odd voices that don't seem to quite fit. However, there at least isn't as much voice actor recycling as in the last game, so that's at least a good thing. I only have a few genuine complaints about the game. One of them has to do with the play control. Much like Grim Fandango and Escape from Monkey Island, Broken Sword 3 uses a completely keyboard-driven interface. However, unlike those games, it seems to me like The Sleeping Dragon was designed principally for consoles, which causes walking to be slightly awkward. Rather than a tank control like in the 3D LucasArts games, the analog walking is imported straight to the four arrow keys, and this means that George always walks in the direction relative to the camera. It's not too bad for the most part, but whenever the camera shifts to a completely new angle, it can be a bit disorienting, though both George and Nico keep heading in the same direction until you let go of the button. Other than that, the controls are fine. However, there is something about George's segments in the game that really bugs me, and that's the fact that every single one of them has a puzzle that involves moving boxes around. I am not kidding, and even as a Zelda fan, I don't actually find these sorts of puzzles at all enjoyable. Most of them aren't even very challenging, just time-consuming. Thankfully, the 3D environments are put to good use for other sorts of puzzles as well, as well as the climbing mechanics and also the sneaking mechanics when you have to avoid bad guys at certain points in the game. Beyond these two flaws, The Sleeping Dragon is one of the best adventure game sequels I know, and definitely worth picking up and giving a try. And heck, after such a good sequel, I'm sure the fourth game is just as... Alright, alright, take my money, but don't hurt me! Oh my god!